Welcome everyone. So today, ooh, hearing a little feedback there. All right. So today I'm going to do um, a class I really I've taught a couple of times over the years, and I just really love it. It was sort of the change in at least people having conversations more about this because I thought it was a, a timely topic uh, to get and hone our skills around pricing because a lot of us have probably not been honing that skill as much as we hadn't or haven't had to as much as in the past. And so the first part that we're going to get into this part, and I, I dropped into the message board. Um, I'm going to have to figure out how to change my, my uh, sentence here so that I admit people automatically. Uh, but in the message board, if one of you guys can just check and make sure that you see it there, because I, I added it before everybody joined in. But I added two Google links, one to the curriculum that we're going to go through, the agenda that we're going to go through today but also just the CMA. So if you guys want to follow along, you don't see anything there? All right, I will do it again then, let's do this. I don't know if anybody else sees it, but I don't see it. Yeah, all right, and maybe I tried. That's curriculum, and then here is a, so you guys can follow along at home or that you have this to re refer back to at some other point in time. There we go, we're share it, cool. Anybody who wants to see it? Awesome. So what we're going through, if you have the agenda over, I'm gonna go through the mindset at first here. So what I wanna really think about is sort of just get our heads around some of the things that may have limited us or not served as well when we go into, into that listing conversation. Uh, so we'll hit that part of it, and then we'll get into the the technical part of things, like how do I run the searches? What am I? What's the results going to look like? And how the conversation should go when we're actually in front of front of that individual? Um, and so let's start with the, the mindset part of things. The the theory around this is like, hey, you know, one, we 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 have to give our, our, our ourselves the permission not to be the end all be all expert on pricing, right? Because how many of you, and, and, and this started with, like my search for this method started with me losing listings because when I got to the pricing discussion, like I, I wowed them with the, the value, how to run our systems, all the attention we're gonna give them, our marketing. But when we got down to the price discussion, I lost them either by going too high or too low. And I kind of tell you, like that just hurt, like all that effort to put out there. It was hard enough to get listings and then to lose it because, you know, I, I was I was just not having the conversation the right way. Uh, and I saw the, the blank looks on the other side of the table. And I'm like, and there's got to be a better way than the way I've been going about it. And so the first part of the mindset is just to give yourself permission, like, hey, um, this pricing thing is not an exact science, right? It's a little bit of art. And a little bit of science and so the first part of the science part is the is the part that we're probably very used to it's the number of beds baths square footage we pull the comps right that's the part that we're used to just pulling off bright mls and having that discussion with our clients the thing is like all that information is like all other economic data it lags the day that you pull it it's already old right the market has changed maybe it's changed substantially maybe it hasn't changed that much but it has changed and so the mindset is like, he know that, that that data is a factor, but not the end all be all, right? It's a component of the analysis, but not the entire analysis. And so when we're pulling those comps down, we wanna A, have that in our mindset, but two, also educate our clients. Like, hey, we're gonna have some data here. It's gonna guide us, but like everything else, it's old data. And so it's just gonna be a, a factor to, guide us along the way but it's not going to be the only and maybe in some cases the most predominant factor in terms of analysis so that that's the science part right like net beds bass square footage um acreage all that all that good stuff but the the art is the squishiness right you know some people prefer an open floor plan some people prefer uh, a house that's built in the 1800s some people prefer whatever the case may be there, there's this squishiness and, and the consumer Tastes do change over time, and the preferences do change over time, and so that's the part that's going to be a little squishy, right? The the art part of things, and so coming into that, understanding it yourself, but also then educating your clients, saying like, hey, 
it's not going to be this this exact drill down 0 0.0 on the price because that just doesn't exist right it's it's we don't have up to date information the way that that they, they think we do um the other important thing is whatever we do we want to set this up in a way that's fully digestible by the client oftentimes i saw people and myself included go into a conversation with way too much data right like way too much like he's like 20 comps 30 comps whatever it is so come in like hey we're going to narrow this thing down in a way that is um easily digestible by the client so that they're not sifting through a bunch of data and being confused by the data so that that's also sort of the, the mindset part of it now the biggest mindset part of this is giving yourself present permission i love with this to not be the end all be all expert right we, we don't and i thought about it, i don't know how many of you thought about it when you first got into the business it was like i have to be the person dictating to them what the price is because i'm the expert and I have to be the expert. I was why, why would they pay me 3%, right? And so give you a proposition. That's not the value, right? We're, we're, we're guides in a very difficult process and helping them decide on what price is or the strategy around where the price is just one component of what we do, right? So the, being the expert on price is like, no, we're not. Instead, this is gonna be a collaborative approach rather than a dict dictating approach, which is what I, I used to do. I used to come in like, here, this is the data i'm going to dictate this is what i see you're expecting me to dictate to you and that led to a lot of just not being on the same page in terms of where we want price so we want to go in there it's like hey we're going to figure this price out together right we're going to we're going to share the data we're going to think about your your goals we're going to look at the market and think about your strategy what strategy how we place ourselves in and then together you me home seller are going to figure out what the best strategy is from a pricing strategy to achieve the goals that you laid out before me so uh, there's another course i teach on like you know you know types of questions you wanted to 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 um pull out and, and uncover with your clients but you do need to your, know your clients goals that's part of the pricing piece here right so you have to go in and understand what they want to achieve typically eight sellers care about three things you know how much money they make, how quickly they can sell it, or if they've had a bad experience with, with an agent in the past, some sort of customer related thing, right? Like, hey, they didn't communicate with me very much. But let's set that aside, set that aside and just focus on the, the first two, how quickly and how much money. That will dictate where you're gonna price things along um, based on what you see out the market. So you have to uncover the goals up front. Um, and then there, there are a couple things that I would say up front from a mindset standpoint, but also from an education standpoint with the, the clients is uh, understand what your days in the market were, are, right? And educate them. Like, you know, back, uh, you'll see in the presentation, just sort of an older presentation with that, I have like the days on market back then was 90 days, right? Um, what are we now? 30? Kristen, you know, 30, 35, 26, something like that. Days in the market, depending on, on the sub market. You know, one of the conversations you want to have is like, hey, we're going to, before you even get into the pricing discussions, the key is to price this thing in line with fair market value because the days on market, again, in this case, back to that, is 90 days. And so we want to make sure that we get a good offer within the first 90 days or the probability that we sell below fair market value goes up exponentially, right? So I'm recording this rewind this in the future so you you're able to say that in your own verb in your in, in your own language but the reality is if they're on the market and they don't price it right in line with fair market value it's going to get the stink right <laughs> you don't want it to stink and so the way i would say like hey we need to price in line with fair market value or the probability that it will sell below fair market value rises exponentially right you want to educate your clients on, on that on that point and the thing is, the thing they're worried about, and you want to alleviate the concerns up front. Again, this is mindset and education, right? The, there is a great statistic out there, um, or, or, or I would have a conversation with the seller. Is like, hey, the good news is with pricing, we're gonna we're gonna end up where we're gonna end up because the capitalist system is what it is, right? The fair market system, information flows freely. You know, if we price this and it's too low, there's a safeguard against that. And you want to hit them with that, hit them with it up front because that's what they're worried about, right? That's one of the biggest fears. 
hey, what if we price this too low? Well, look what's, ha what's happened in this past market. We priced it too low. Market's going to figure it out, and you're going to get multiple bids, and it's going to price it up at fair market value or above in, in many instances, right? So there is actually a, a strategy of pricing your properties below, slightly below fair market value to try and get above fair market value and, and create that, that auction sort of effect. So educate your clients like, hey, listen, you know, we're going to work on this together. We're going to figure it out together. And the thing is, we, with our best information, we're going to come out with a strategy, pricing strategy. But don't worry, because if we're not exactly on, because there is a chance, right? We're not, it's not, it's a little bit of art, it's a little bit of science. It can't be exact. But if we're a little bit low, there's a mechanism in place. It'll get bit above. Also, the contrary is true. Like if we price it too high, the market's going to tell us that too. And they're going to tell us that in the form of, hey, over a two-week period, and I'm gonna, I want you guys to write this down because you need to be saying this at the outside of your conversation. So again, if it's priced too high, the market's going to tell us that too. It's going to tell us in the form of, hey, over a two-week period, uh, less than 10 showings, or you had 10 showings and no offers. That's the market telling us that we're overpriced. And in any scenario, then we're just going to course correct. That's my commitment to you. I'm in your court. I'm this professional that I'm going to guide you along this journey. And my commitment to you is we're going to analyze this. We're going to come up with a strategy here. But for whatever reason, if it's slightly off, we're just going to course correct together. We're going to get you where you want to go in your goals, right? Sell this house because you're tired of commuting. Sell this house because you want to be closer to your, your, your family. That is super, super important to sort of get it in your brain, the mindset part of things, the theory part of things, but then also have these conversations at the outset and, and basically educate your client like this is the sort of what happens and how it works. Make sense? Any questions about that? Honestly, if you just take all of that just alone and just own it, this will definitely help your conversation and help you with your pricing. Now, what do we want to do in terms of running our searches? What we want to do is start broad and then narrow down, right? And we're going to hit the key categories, beds, bath, square footage, parking, acreage, whatever, you know, then start looking at the picture, pictures and, and, and hone down on finishes, right? But at the end of the day, I want you to pull no more than eight to 10 properties, okay? And the mix of those properties need to be in these categories. You need to have a pretty good set of categories, a mix of active, a, ma a mix of settled, and then a mix of expired and withdrawn. Now, when you go into the conversation, you start going through your pricing, I want you to start with the category of settled. I want to share. Now, you know, I want to talk, I want to talk about the theory first, and then, then I'll pull some examples. So before you start looking at properties, and I suggest having a printed copy, have a tablet so you can scroll through pictures. But the first category I want you to go through is settled. And the words I want you to say, generally speaking, use your own voice, is that, hey, we're going to look at settled first. What they represent are the people who have lived the dream, right? They're the ones that want to sell and have actually achieved the dream. They've sold their houses, right? And so there's a lot of great data there. We're going to look at what they did. We're going to see where they started on the price, how many days in the market it took to sell. Remember, now it's 30 days, so they stay within 30 days or 90 days, whatever it is. Um, then that's the model that we want to follow, right? So we're going to find one that's as close to ours as much as possible. Um, then we're looking at the second category, Mr. Mr. Seller. That's the expired and withdrawn. Those are the people who did not live the dream, right? <laughs> they they want to sell, and unfortunately, for a lot of reasons, they did not. Uh, succeed in terms of what they want to achieve and there's a lot of great data there that we want to do because we don't want to repeat the mistakes that they made don't you agree mr and mrs seller right and so and then the third category is active right once we sort of figure out generally what we want to achieve where the price range is then we're going to look at the competitive landscape out there. we're going to look at who is out there where the price that and depending on what you you know what our goals are here if it's to sell quicker or sell for more, more money that's going to indicate where we fall in on that on that price range and where we set ourselves up right if you want to sell quicker or we're going to put yourself on the lower end of the price range if you want to sell for more money at the higher end of the price price range make sense all right now i'm going to share my screen
And this is an old list that I had ages ago, but it still works, right? So the, the subject property was 803 South Percy Street. It was 2,500 square feet, three bedrooms, two and a half baths, one car garage, yada, 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 all that good stuff. So this is how I used to run it. Um, CMA for up listens report. And I would really live in my conversations on this summer report, frankly, um, and then have the my tablet open, just scrolling through pictures, right? And as, as I said, I would start with the closed. And when I set up my search, um, uh, guys and gals, I made sure that I had enough closed properties. I made sure I found one that was worse and I made clearly worse, right? Not as good as the subject property. And I made sure there was one that was clearly better because I'm trying to set the bookends here, right? And so the conversation would go something like, all right, well, let's look at the closed transactions, closed sales that are in your circumference, right? And uh, your mile radius, or whatever it is. Here's one, you know, head house square. It's got one more bedroom than yours, same number of beds and baths, but it's five, 500 square feet smaller than yours. They listed at 850, closed at 837.5 with a $3,000 concession. So, you know, 833 and change. And they listed and sold in four days. Average days in the market, remember back in here was 90 days. So that was a pretty good strategy, right? They, they did pretty well for themselves. Looks like, um, you know, and that might go to the picture like, yeah, maybe not as good as yours. The finishes aren't as, as nice. So I think your house is, is probably better than head house court. What do you think? Yeah, great. Are you agree? All right, let's go for its 20 fifths water. Same number of beds, same number of baths, roughly same square footage, listed at 885. Close at 850 in seven days. Pretty good strategy, right? Wouldn't you agree? Right. And I'm, I'm asking those types of questions and getting their, their acknowledgement because you you want to get their buy-in, right? We're collaboratively doing this. And this is all logical stuff. If at the end of this they're they're saying something different than the numbers um indicate, then we either got a logical seller, which we might want to walk away from, or we gotta go back to the beginning and re-educate them, right? Uh, and so again, I'm going through this process. You're six, 613 Lombard, very similar. They priced at this point, 50 days, sold to 790. And then I have the one that's way better, right? It's 4,200 square feet. Remember, the subject property was 2,500. It sold, you know, here they sold at 849 and it bit, got bid up to 911 with, with concessions to $900,000. So if you look at it, where am I targeting? Right, I'm targeting around 850, but don't ask for 900. And I'm I agree we shouldn't be down as a as as low as 837. Is really, and I'm not saying that to them. I'm having them self discover it by saying have them acknowledge like, hey, at the end of the day, this one feels the most like yours. Right, this one's better. This one's worse. This one's sort of been par, maybe an outlier. And so I'll go through the close, and then I'll go through the expired next. Like our, in this case, we have two expires withdrawn. Here's one, four bedrooms, four and a half baths, 3,000 square feet, so a little bit bigger, have more bedroom. They listed at 985, 195 days in the market, and they finally just took it off the market, didn't sell. Let's look at the other one. Here's 750 not South 9th Street, right around the corner from you. One more bedroom, one more full bath, around the same square footage. Listed 999, 236 days in the market, and then sell again, right? So what are we seeing already? A clear pattern, like in the $900,000 range is not where we want to be. And clearly over near a million is not where we want to be. We want to be right here. And at no point am I telling them this, they are self-discovering it, right? Like, hey, these people tried here, didn't work. Don't do that, dummy, right? It's sort of inherently what we're saying. And so I then will circle back and say, all right, guys, what do you think? Which one of these feels the most likely works? That's the question you want to ask, right? Cool. Well, 420 Fitzwater South Street, number C, felt the most like yours. Great. Well, let's look at what they did. They listed at 885 and they sold in seven days in 850. Does that sound like a good strategy to you? Not yes, right? You know, that's what you want. <laughs> at that point, you want to have not yes. And, and again, this is feel the difference, right? Rather than be like, hey, I think it should be we should list this at 885. 
that's me dictating to them versus like, hey, which one do you think feels more like yours? Which, and then along the process, I'm getting them to acknowledge, all right, this one feels more like yours. How's this different? All right, this one's better. This one's lower, right? Again, a logical person will try, will go right into this, right? If they say, well, I think that we should list a 900, you know, 920 or 985 when they've seen this data, when they've seen this other house that was better than theirs, sell for much higher. Um, then we got, again, either re-educate them or say next, right? If they're going to just like, hey, my house got gold balloons in the basement or, or you know, I, some sort of illogical reason why they think their house is better, even though it's not the data doesn't bear out on makes sense and so then you got the settled the expires and then the last part we want to go to is like all right cool now let's go take a look at the competitive landscape we've got four houses in the market that are like yours in the same geography and let's figure out where we want to price here we got one that's been on the market for two days listed 849 Three bedrooms, three and a half baths, slightly smaller than you, but pretty darn close. Here's another one, one extra bedroom, 25 inch square feet. Again, listed 850. Where do we want to be? This one's been on the market 124 days for a million dollars. We don't want to be there. You know, you, you told me you want to sell quickly. Well, maybe we put our property at 845. Right? Does that work for you? Or you know what? I don't need to sell quickly. I need it's more important that I pull enough more money out of this right, for my next down payment. All right, well, let's, let's, let's price ourselves in between your 850 and 875. Make sense? Any questions on that? No questions? Everybody feel they can have this conversation? Feel a lot better than going walking in like, hey, I'm the expert and I gotta tell you what the price is? Yeah. It's all about setting that expectation and then setting up the categories in place so that you're walking through it systematically, right? So make sure that um, you're, you're explaining what those categories are um, and going through that process. Um, now, tough questions, issues, stu stuff that like I learned the hard way is that when you're going there always you know i mean you probably do this already right this is sort of an older presentation right like you got to check what the zillow values are these days because they know what they are right so i can't tell you how many times i pull into the driveway I'm like oh shoot i forgot that step <laughs> and i'm pulling up on my uh what do you call that on my uh on my tablet or my phone just to make sure that i knew what that was also, check the public records. If you're working with a lot of investors and you've got a listing presentation, uh, listing uh, appointment on an investment property, some of them get sold off market, especially you know, an area that I used to work at quite a lot, Temple University, they get sold off market. So not just looking at uh, the MLS stuff, but look at the public records on that street and make sure you understand where the comps are there. Um, check all active and pendant on that street. Sometimes, there might be some that are above your price range that you set or below but your client prospective client knows exactly what's available in that market but didn't show up in your search because you had set certain parameters so make sure you understand that um those are the key points and i actually did a lot quicker than i, I, I intended to talk to me what questions might you have what challenges might you have right now with sellers Anybody? I'm gonna pick on somebody. Um getting them, getting seller. That's that's my challenging right now. So <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot out there. Well, you know what? It's funny. We we just did have our our um our revs market report, and the biggest opportunity out there right now are expires. So if you don't have an expired program going right now, you should get out there and start calling expires. And, to, and if, you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at um, the Rebs market report that just came out in January. They specifically go into all the indicators why that the biggest opportunity right now in our market are expires. You were shaking your head, Kristen. Sound like you wanted to say something. I was shaking my head because I accidentally pinned myself as I was meant to hit unmute. I did the wrong thing. I was going to ask on about 
how he's trying to get sellers, but I was curious. I think that's a great question. How are you going about it, Don? Um, for me, it's a lot of like um, networking. So, um, I mean, trying to call past clients or just more or less, it works for me. So, you know, yeah. I'm just going to do what works. So yeah. a lot of my, it's just like meeting them, uh, talk to them, meeting new people, meeting new business owner. Um, it, it just uh, having coffee, basically just to get to know them. And for me, um, and Gimel's, uh notice this i'm trying to break in the market that I, where i live it's a little tough <laughs> but i've been doing that got some traction um involved a lot in community service uh school wise because i got three kids in the uh, school district so my wife's on the pto so it just kind of slowly but you know I, I get my names out there uh so notice that you know i am in real estate business and you know gradually somebody better call me that's all yeah. i'm saying <laughs> i think being intentional about that stuff is yes key right so just like setting a, a plan but that's that's great yeah i mean i i don't go out with the intention oh i have to get business in turn you know it, it's more like okay my wife's involved in it i'm gonna get involved to yeah. help her out as far as like you know certain activities and things like that and um when it comes up of course you know we're in profession that we're gonna share what we do for a living stuff like that um but not like go out like you know just advertise, yes, I'm in the real estate business, you know, if you need to sell or whatever. I don't do that. And I think that's very ineffective anyway. People don't like that. It's come as very salesy, you know. Yeah. So Yeah. I I I'm gonna support and, and really push up the, the intention part of it is huge, right? There there was I remember the year that I decided I didn't want to work with buyers anymore and I was only gonna work with sellers. And I became very intentional with just every conversation that I had. I specifically dropped the request for, hey, who do you know is looking to buy? And just, who do you know is looking to sell? Now, it didn't stop people from offering buyers. Like, that's what I think some people were concerned about. Like, hey, oh, if I stop asking buyers, I won't get that business. What would happen is like, uh, I don't know anybody's looking, somebody do know somebody's looking to buy. We're like, cool, well, I'll take that as well. And, and I brought it into the team. But I got really intentional on the asking for sellers and, and contacts um and for three years in a row I, I did take 100 listings every single year when i when i implemented that and and then i really got intentional about what are the lead sources that could lead to sellers right i had meetings with commercial bankers because i wanted to meet developers right they're doing deals construction loan deals with developers and so i got uh to talk to commercial lenders i'm like hey introduce me to to some of your developer friends and when i met with the developer friends like hey man, just give me a shot on your worst property like your, your crappy little rehab that you got and let me just knock it out of the, out of the park for you. And that led to a bunch of, of developer uh, listings. Um, other sources are, you know, trusting estate attorneys, family law attorneys. Unfortunately, people get divorced and unfortunately people die. And there's gonna be, you know, the opportunity to sell their houses and help them through that, that, that tough period. Um, Gosh, I'm blanking out on some other sources. Chris, I'm sure you can add some stuff like, you know, there, there are strategic alliances that you can have and, and go out there and and network. Yeah, I think networking is awesome. I mean, it's it's very personal and it's great chamber of commerce, all those kinds of, you know, different relationships. One of the things that we've done for years is circle prospecting. So if you've got buyers and they need a property and inventory is low, it's been a good match to be able to make phone calls to specific neighborhoods and ask you know, for one time showing opportunities or, you know, a market analysis so you can get your foot in the door um, that way. So that's been effective for us. Awesome. Good. How about you, Jen? Any questions? Yeah. Did you find this helpful? On uh, when you're doing your pricing, would you approach it this way or have you approached it differently? Uh, something similar. Um, yeah, I, I mean, not exactly in your signs, but some, <laughs> um, so I, I do do, um, like you say, you know, low and some high and some, uh, but mainly I'm focused on like 
where right you know the the property is at like the closer the better of course right i mean on the blocks and things like that yeah. uh, unfortunately in philadelphia the market is really crazy like the next door could sell for like two dollars and the other one sell for ten so it's it, that's the conversation of more i'm having with people and why the two dollars there <laughs> rather than but you kind of have to explain that and like you say you know give them that uh educate them in how things works uh you know things are off market or someone didn't know any better so that's that's a lot of conversation that i've been having with especially seller uh because of course you know every one of them wants to sell at the highest the best and we we kind of have to convey that right that that's what we are going to try to do but you know unfortunately a lot of them you know that that trust issues like ah you just want to put it on the market to get a commission yeah. <laughs> so that that's you know that's some of the stuff i'm having um issue with in terms of like because you know some neighborhood it's so crazy uh, you got 150 and 200 there and then next thing you know there's only like seventy five thousand dollar, like you know literally the next block and how does that happen but you, you kind of have to explain to them you know houses in shamble and things like that so it just um that's that's you know that's my market in term uh because I do my average probably about 250 ish and give or take. Uh, so, and it's been working for me. So that's where, <laughs> you know, I focus on. But like, I'm, I want to move into like the higher, higher market, but you kind of, you know, have that present. Then, you know, you, you with the communities and or any way you service. And I think that will come uh i i believe it will come it just i like it to be sooner <laughs> but it will come well, that, that, that's just consistency persistence and you, yeah you know, absolutely you, you keep on having those conversations it will absolutely come um i do want to address one of the points that you meant, said earlier which is that the perception that like, hey you you as an agent uh sellers think just want to list it not you but generally us right want to list properties just to sell and make a commission there, there's a dialogue that I'll give you that I I used to use, and again, it's not screwed up because I I believe the words that I'm about to share with you, um, yeah, and sort of next level, like we, we even before you show up in the appointment, you know, best practice is to ask them like, what do you think your house is worth and sell, and oftentimes what you'll get is a pushback from like, well, no, that's what I'm asking you to tell me, uh, you're the expert, and I'm like, I'm sorry, and you know, Marcus is pretty good, he's not on the call today, but he's pretty good at this too. Uh, like, all right, I'm sorry. I think you misunderstood why I was asking the question. Like, I just want to understand where, what your expectations are. What you'd say will not impact my advice one way or the other. And let me explain why. Because 90% of my business is built on repeat and referral business. So it doesn't serve me to tell you something that you want to hear and then me not be able to deliver on it, right? I feed my family on repeat and referral business. So I need you at the end of this process to be a raving fan of mine uh, and give me lots of referrals. In fact, during the process, I'm going to ask you for a bunch of referrals uh, if I'm delivering on, on my service to you. And so I'm not asking because I, I just want to know what the number is. I'm going to tell you what you, what you want to hear. Because at the end of the day, if I do that, the house won't sell. You'll be mad at me. I'll be mad because I won't make any money and then you won't give me any referrals. And so it won't serve us either way for me to just tell you what I think you want to hear. I'm going to shoot straight with you no matter what, like whether you like it or you, you like the number, or you don't like the number, because again, at the end of the day, it's about referrals and repeat business. And I need you to be a raving fan of mine at the end of this process. End of story, man. Like, so that, that should cut through all that, that stuff of like, Hey, you just want to sell, you just want to commission. Like, no, man, I'm, I listen, do I want the commission? Sure, but I need the commission in a certain way. I need you to love me and my team or my process so that you will refer me to everybody that you know in your world. That's the only way it works. You win because you had a great experience and you achieved your goal and I win because I get to, you know, continue to feed my family. Right? Um, but use something like that and think about how, because that, that has to be the truth. If you want to repeat and referral business, a sustainable long-term, that has to be the truth. 
You can't be doing things just because you think that's what they want to hear. Right. And that's that's sort of the point of this process. It's like, hey, I'm not going to tell you what, what it is because none of us know what it truly is. Like, we're just going to come together and figure out a, the best strategy that we can as two smart people trying to figure this thing out. And we might be off and most likely we will be off. But we'll course correct and we'll work together to get you where you need to be. Right. Cool. Um, we're getting near the end of the session. I just want to make sure there's no other questions remaining. Awesome. Hearing none. <laughs> All right, there. Well, uh, next time, what, what's the next class we're teaching, Kristen? You, you, uh, is it yours, Chris or Kristen? You're you're having a, uh, a mastermind session. My mastermind is in uh, the sixth on the sixteenth. Awesome. All right, everybody, please tune in. I am going to, I'm recording this because I'm going to post this baby out there because I want people to hear about all the great work we're doing within our group. Um, thank you again for attending. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to email me, call me. Thank Anytime. you so much. Thank you. Have a good thank one. You guys. See ya. See ya. Be well.